So before when I introduced differentiation, I said that there were some mechanics that, was, that were working in the background uh, that I wasn't going to explain just yet. And this is differentiation from first principles. This is what I want to explain to you in this video. So the best way to do it is to really start with a curve. So let's say here is my curve. And let's say that this has the equation y equals some function of x. y is equal to f of x. It might be y is equal to x squared. Uh, it might be x cubed. It might be x cubed plus x squared. Who knows? It doesn't matter. Okay. So this is a generic curve. And let's put an x-axis in. Okay. So there is the x-axis. So at a particular point... So let's choose a point here, for example. Okay, This point will have coordinates so that it has this x coordinate. Let's just call it x. And it will have a y coordinate given by f of x. And so this point will have the coordinates x, f of x. Okay, so if f of x was x squared, for example, and this point was 2, this would be 2, 2 squared, so 2, 4. Okay, so that is a generic point on the curve. Now, what I want to do is I want to determine the gradient of the curve at that point. Okay, so I want to find the gradient of this line effectively. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a point that is reasonably close to it or that is also on the curve. So by reasonably close, I know that this doesn't seem like it's reasonably close, but let's say that I've zoomed in and now these two points, although they looked quite close originally, were now kind of further apart. Okay, so here is another point. I'm just trying to Make sure that I drop this line vertically, otherwise it's not going to look any good. Okay, so that'll do. So let's say that this point is a little bit along the x-axis. So let's say that it is a little bit along, so let's put it at x plus h. Okay, so at x and add a little bit of h. Okay, and that gets you there. So if this x-coordinate is x plus h, this, the coordinates of this point on the curve will be x plus h and then f of x plus h. Okay? So if it was x, f of x here, it will be x plus h, f of x plus h there. So what I can then do is find the gradient of the chord between those two points. So I can draw a line going from one point to the other, like that. And I can find the gradient of that chord. So the gradient of that chord, so if I just call that M for the time being, will be the difference in the Y coordinates. So this Y coordinate take away that Y coordinate. So F of X plus H take away F of X divided by the difference in the x-coordinates. So x plus h take away x. Now we know that x plus h take away x. Well, the x's are going to cancel. And so I'd just be left with f of x plus h take away f of x divided by h. OK? Now that all seems reasonable enough. Now... By, um, by construction, I've decided that this point is reasonably close, OK? But it's not close enough. Effectively, what I want to do is I want to drag that point along the curve until it gets closer and closer and closer to this point here. Now, why would I do that? Well, if I draw... Let's say I've dragged this point along and the point is now there. And I now draw the point, oh, sorry, the line between those two points. Hopefully what you can see is that that line is a better 
approximation to the tangent at that point than that one was. So if I keep on choosing points that are closer along, closer to this point, that are closer along the curve, then as I get closer and closer and closer, this chord that I've drawn will get closer and closer and closer to being the tangent line that I want. And effectively what I'm doing is I'm not physically dragging that point along, but what I am doing is I'm shrinking this distance. And that means I'm shrinking how large h is. So I'm making h, the, the number that I'm adding on each time, smaller and smaller and smaller until I get to x. So, in actual fact, the gradient of the curve, the dy by dx, is actually equal to the f of x plus h minus f of x over h, that chord, okay? That's the gradient of the chord, but I'm shrinking h until it gets towards zero, until that gap between the two points that I'm looking at, this red point that's on the curve and that black point that's there, gets so small that h is effectively goes towards zero. And the way that we write that is we write it as the limit as h tends to zero. So this function here, this limit, shrinks h to zero and drags that point closer and closer and closer to that one there. So we can actually write dy by dx, the gradient of the curve, to be this limit. Okay? And all differentiation is, is this li a limit. Okay? So let me show you an example. So let's say we started off with the curve y equals x squared. Okay? Let's say that f of x is equal to x squared. Then I know what f of x is. Uh, h can stay as it is because that's just a, a number that is getting smaller. And f of x plus h is something that I need to find. So I need to find f of x plus h. So if f of x is x squared, then f of x plus h is x plus h squared. Now that I can multiply out and expand because that's x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. Okay? So I now have, if I erase this bit up here, I now have that dy by dx is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h, that x squared plus 2hx plus h squared, that's that bit there. Take away f of x, which is x squared, all over h. Okay? Now, the x squareds here are going to cancel. And what I can also see there is that I'm going to be left with 2hx plus h squared over h. Now, what I can then do is cancel through by the h. So I get left with 2x plus h. Because I've got 2hx divided by h and h squared divided by h, which leaves me this. And so as h gets closer and closer and closer to 0, 2x plus h will get closer and closer and closer to just 2x. So you can effectively, in that stage, almost substitute h for 0. And so, if y is equal to x squared, then dy by dx is 2x. Now, that's something that we should know from what we've looked at before. And you can do the same process with x cubed, or x cubed plus x squared, you can do it with really any uh, function. You're 
Some obviously will be a lot harder than others to work with. Um, and so I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't suggest you do too many using this method. But it's nice to see that there are is this me these mechanics that are working in the background that allow us to bring that power down to the front and take one off the power. Okay. Now some questions are devoted to working with differentiation from first principles, and we're going to look at an example of this in the next video.